Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing episode one of a really silly new series on my channel. So I was actually really inspired by the H3 podcast for this video challenge. And what they do is they have a segment every now and then, I don't think they've done it in a while, where it's a silent library, they have a sound level meter, and the team do really random challenges. And if they're too loud, then the sound level meter goes off and they forfeit. So I thought, how can I make that bookish? And I decided to start my own silent library series on my channel. And for that, I'm going to be reading a couple of books that I'm really excited about that are interesting to say the least. And I'm going to read these books out loud and I will have to like try and whisper or not go too loud. But if I laugh too loudly and it sets off the alarm, then I do have to take a shot. So I do have some rosy <laughs> for this challenge. It's the only thing I could think of. If you have any suggestions in the future what I should do if the alarm goes off, then do let me know down below. But I don't even know how this is gonna go, really. I've set the alarm at 76. So if I go over 76 on the sound level meter, then the alarm will go off, I need to take a shot. So before I tell you which books I'm gonna talk about, if you do end up liking this video, don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And now I'm gonna turn on the sound level meter. We have to be really quiet because, you know, the librarian in this library, she's a bit of a bitch. In fact, I had to smuggle this in. This is either gonna go really right or really horribly wrong. I don't know yet. <laughs> and this is all the rosy I have. Why am I drinking it? Anyway, let's turn on the sound level meter. I don't have like a fancy setup or anything. It's set to 76. We're just gonna test it to see if it does go off when I talk over 76. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> so that's the alarm. I'm gonna do my best not to go over 76. I think, oh, that was so close. I think we should test it by letting you know what I'm reading in this video. The thing is though, when I'm not supposed to laugh, that's when I want to laugh more. The first book, in fact, no, I'm going to read this book first. The first book I'm reading is, Are You There God? I thought I heard Cody masturbating, but it was just my grandma stirring a pot of shells and cheese. So this is going to be the first book that I read. This one follows newly stepbrothers and I think they hooked up at Thanksgiving and yeah the only thing they can't wait to taste is each other. They've been dreaming all semester about finally exchanging gravy and boy are they thankful they have the house to themselves for a few hours, don't they? <laughs> and then the second book that I'm gonna read is Cock. This is a Gay Joe's retelling. There is a mindless killing machine that arrives with an insatiable appetite for destruction and a strange preoccupation with what gay men do privately. So think Joe's, but if Joe's was a middle-aged homophobic white woman. We'll start with Are You There God? Jason put his suitcase down and closed the door. He flopped on the bed. Patches, a teacup chihuahua, licked his face vigorously. This is the most affection I've had all semester, he said aloud. The dog kept licking. Jason's mum had abandoned Patches, along with the rest of the family, three years ago. Oh, the bitch. When she announced her new boyfriend and abruptly moved in with him, Jason was blindsided by her cold departure and had been more than happy to be leaving for school. Rowan, his father, was not entirely shocked by the announcement. He and Barbara hadn't fucked in three years. <laughs> Not since Bob had begun cruelly ridiculing him for losing his boner more than a few times during sex. The truth was that Bob suffered from very sudden onset diarrhea, yet she inexplicably insisted on anal sex, <laughs> which she preferred to vaginal. Unfortunately, her bowel issues were responsible for precipitating more than a few very unfortunate experiences during intimacy. Oh, God. Why am I getting flashbacks? Yes, there is a story. Oh, shit. <laughs> First shot of the night, double shots. This is for Bob and her sudden onset diarrhea. Bob, who also suffered from a self-awareness deficit, preferred to attribute his lack of desire to his time in the service 
which Barb had entirely concocted in her head. Rowan was never in the surface. Shit. <laughs> this one's for Rowan, who wasn't ever in service. We have to be careful, he laughed, tumbling onto the pillows with the dog on his chest. Cordy might get jealous if he sees you kissing me like this. I wish Cordy would get jealous, he thought. What the fuck am I reading? I'll not read all of it. Hopefully just the funny bits. Eva is Jason's father's girlfriend. Eva smiled in a way that seemed to indicate that she knew more than she let on. It made Jason uneasy. He momentarily suspected that his father had told Eva about the time. The horrific time. The time his dad had accidentally walked in on Josh sucking his dick while he played a video game. What? Who was Josh? In a moment of little sounds and inebriated courage, Jason grabbed his new stepbrother's face and kissed him. To his surprise, Cordy reciprocated with a thrilling immediacy that propelled the boys into an hour-long makeout session in the clubhouse. It was hot, heavy, and clothes stayed on the entire time. A fact which Jason couldn't figure out if he was disappointed about or not. It was incredibly confusing because Cordy was now a part of the family, by marriage, and they both had girlfriends at their respective colleges. These stepbrothers have the hots for each other. But they both have girlfriends. Eva was fond of announcing that she knew Cody and his girlfriend Colleen were going to get married. Wait, they're going to get married? They're going to get married? Ooh, Betty. Betty must be grandma. She is about to make some Betty's Blue Ribbon Macaroni and Cheese. Oh, she seems really supportive as well because she would buy him things for Christmas and birthdays that he would ask for that weren't typically masculine. So we have a good one on our hands. Betty seems nice. Betty had accidentally seen Jason and Cody kissing during the wedding reception. Since her suspicions about Jason had been confirmed, she had tried to stay aware of gay issues by reading gay publications, searching news articles, and watching a lot of queer movies and shows. I love her. I stand an informed ally. I wish I could just order dick on the phone and then send it back home. <laughs> She had said to herself between sips of coffee when she read about Humper, the app that the gays, the gays, were using to hook up. Dick doesn't snore, just the creep that's attached to it. Whiskers had returned to the kitchen. Right, Whiskers? He was rubbing against the leg of Betty's purple tracksuit and making his unusual purr meow. You just need the dick for an hour or two, that's all. What? Why is she talking about that <laughs> I stand an ally but oh, why is she like she knows too much oh Cody is back Jason heard Cody saunter up the staircase his footsteps sent in wave after wave of anticipation he had a semi chub oh my god okay now we're getting straight into it things are good I guess this semester isn't too bad Jason said realizing his erection was clearly visible through his pants Cody glanced down at the swollen cock outline, then back up onto his stepbrother's eyes. Happy to see me, he asked, smiling. It sprung out, foreskin intact, ready to travel to far off lands, meet new folks and save new sights. Wow, said Cody. It looks like a beautiful, tasty banana. <laughs> Jason smiled. Do you like big bananas up your butt? He winked. What? What is this? I don't know, but I'm willing to try, Cody answered. As long as it's not too ripe, can we fucking stop with the banana metaphor? Jeez. Cody caressed the entirety of the dick and cupped Jason's ample balls with his free hand. Them some big coconuts, partner. What? What is with the fruit comparisons? Are coconuts fruit? I actually don't know. Well, thank you, ma'am. What is this? Jason said, tipping his imaginary hat. We aims to please. Oh my God, this is so cringy. This is just re fuck. It's just so cringy. What? Who talks like that? Thank you, ma'am. Honestly. Ugh. Fuck. Pardon me, but like. Jason grabbed Cordy and, in one swift movement, pulled himself from under him, threw him on the bed, and straddled him. Cordy was taken aback. Well, all right, cowboy. I guess you like the top bunk. I'm an equal opportunist, but right now I feel like riding horseback. So many analogies. Why? Why are there so many analogies? 
Jason undid each button after having spent some time near it, eventually spreading the shirt open, revealing the dark fur on Cordy's chest. Mmm, Sasquatch. I think you mean Asquatch, Cordy corrected jokingly. Every morning I rob a stagecoach, gotta get out of their lickety split. Speaking of, said Jason, turning Cody over onto his stomach, he put an arm under Cody's waist and hoisted his ass up in the air. Let me show you a move I call the lickety split. Oh my god. Jason spread Cody's ass cheeks apart and spat onto the pink puckered hole bullseye. <laughs> bullseye. I was on such a good reading streak this year so far. I've been reading great books. Great books. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Oh. The saliva began to pool and slowly make its way down the crack. Chase, oh no, no, no. I hate when they do this. Jason lapped it up greedily. Every time. Every time. Mm, there's some good eating. Okay, we've got to retire this cowboy stuff. I'm going to barf. Same. Jason lay back down on the bed and Cody straddled on top of him. He leaned down and tongued up the base of Jason's pulsing member. I hate that word. Cody looked at Jason with a mischievous grin and took his right index finger in his mouth. With the same hand, he cupped Jason's balls and inched his way lower until he reached his puckered hole. Why puckered? His pink puckered hole. Puckered hole. Cody pressed his digit far up... Wait, his digit? Cody pressed his digit far up Jason's ass, arriving at his prostate. What? His digit? After an eternal moment of stillness, Jason sensed Cody's tongue lap in his chest. He opened his eyes to find his brother licking up his... Pollocked? Pollocked? Torso with vigour. I'm not through with you yet, Jason said, removing himself from under Cordy and pressing Cordy face down onto the bed. He lifted Cordy's ass up again and spat another generous amount of saliva onto the left cheek. Very specific. You want it, he asked. Please, Cordy whispered. So Betty, poor Betty, totally oblivious, is just making her mac and cheese as you do. I'm gonna hop in the shower before everyone comes home. Ah, so this must be where the title comes from. This is where we get the misunderstanding. Patch's tiny toenails were clanking on the kitchen floor under Betty's legs while she stirred the boiling water and poured the entire box of shell-shaped noodles in. Look out, I'm gonna accidentally burn you with this hot water. My cat would eat that little dog for lunch, she thought. Wait, what? That whole paragraph did not make any sense. Jason woke with a jolt. I guess I needed a nap. He wondered how long the shower had been off. There was no sign of Cody. Cody, he called out softly. He stood up, still naked, and went down the hall. The bathroom door was ajar and the lights were off. Where'd he go? He stepped on the inside of the stairs next to the wall to avoid making any creaking sounds as he descended the staircase. As he rounded the corner into the doorway by the kitchen, he heard a strange sound. Wet. Thick, 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 thick. <laughs> like flip-flops around a swimming pool. And then it changed. It sounded less rhythmic. And slimier. <laughs> I'd recognise that sound anywhere. It's Cody, jerking off in there. Why down here after a shower? That horny little bastard. Jason sprung into the kitchen from the doorway. Ready for round two? He yelled as he jumped. Just as Betty approached, carrying the pot of cheesy noodles towards her casserole dish. She let out a tiny scream of surprise as the pot clattered onto the floor. The wooden spoon flung warm shell pasta across Jason's face and naked torso. You okay down there? Cody called from upstairs. Jason stood frozen in shock, mouth agape, brain whirring as he attempted to process why he stood, covered in cheese sauce, in front of his grandma Betty. One solitary noodle, which had landed on the tip of his dangling penis, <laughs> fell onto the linoleum floor. Well, said Betty dryly, breaking in the thunderous silence, at least you take after your grandfather. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. At least he takes after his grandfather. <laughs> okay, that book was absolutely shit, and I'm changing the sound level me. I'm going to change it to 80, because it will go off every now and then, 
literally just because a call was passing outside. And literally the whole title of this book didn't happen until like the very freaking end. Let's hope cock is better. This one's a bit longer. According to Japanese folklore, a hideous sharp-toothed demon once fell in love with a kind and gentle maiden. For some reason, his affections were unreciprocated, and so naturally he moved into her vagina to eat the dick off of any suitor she might take. After a string of gruesome and voluntary castrations, the woman grew annoyed with the predicament. She vis I mean, so she wasn't annoyed by the fact that he just went to live inside her vagina? Like, that wasn't a big red flag to begin with? She visited a local blacksmith and commissioned a penis forged from steel to trick the tiny devil squatter. <laughs> Can you imagine just someone squatting in your vagina? It just, what? When the evil incubus heard the arrival of an unwelcome visitor at the entrance of his warm dwelling, the pussy demon unwittingly chomped the iron dildo, shattering his razor-sharp teeth into tiny pieces, thus delivering the woman from the demonic cooch surfer. <laughs> that was the prologue. Oh god, there's a festival of the steel penis. Traditionally, the event honoured male fertility by parading three giant penis makoshi shrines throughout the city. The queers not to be outdone by a primarily heterosexual celebration of the mighty dick, saw an opportunity to temporarily reject their cultural suppression while increasing visibility for the community and drink. What? The shrine consisted of a wooden platform mounted with a gigantic penis, painted electric pink and erected high into the air like a phallic obelisk. While revered, the huge cock did occasionally sustain damage from being hoisted above the heads of wild deviants who banged, rubbed and humped the statue, normal wear and tear. What has this got to do with Jaws? Did she ever wheel the obelisk to the edge of a nearby cliff? Yeah, Mr. Pee Pee, he said. You can look out at the ocean. Maybe one day you'll grow up to be a lighthouse. Tashiro tied the wooden base of the effigy to a nearby tree. I'll be right back. Don't try to fuck anyone. With that, he made his way back up the path to his makeshift art studio to retrieve his camera. A large albatross had perched on a nearby tree and was digging her beak into the feathers on her back. She paused, looking up to watch Tashiro walking away. When Tashiro disappeared inside the building, the curious bird dived down from its branch to inspect the glistening pink tower. The oversized bird landed awkwardly on the rounded dick head and was surprised when its feet stuck to the wet varnish. Alarmed, it began flapping widely, jostling the statue in the process. The penis rocked on the wooden base and the bird eventually freed itself, flying away in terror. The cock continued swaying, eventually falling over onto its side. It rolled off of its platform and onto the ground, speeding down the slight decline of the cliffside. Ah, so I wonder if this massive penis shrine thing is cock. Now we're at Coast of Fire Island, New York. Chris attempted to unbutton his pants as he stumbled through the sand of Cherry Grove. He thought Will was really swell and he hadn't wanted to seem like a square around him and his friends. Okay, so Chris is just trying to impress Will. So Chris must be, you know, the opening of Jaws when the girl goes into the water and she's the first one to get eaten by Jaws. I think this is him. The cool sand thrust up between his toes and flung up behind him as he ran toward Will, who was already naked and in the water. Okay, that's different. Okay, so now Chris and Will are both in the water. Don't worry, I'll warm you up, Will laughed devilishly. He was soon sporting a full chub. It just, why, what is this author's obsession with calling a chub? It jutted out from his thick bush like the bow spirit of a ship cutting, onto the, uh, cutting into the oncoming waves. The waves became less frequent as he moved away from the shore. The water was almost up to his chin now. Something brushed against his dick. Da-da, da-da. I think we're going to need another ball. But Will, he called shakily, a wave of terror suddenly swelling in him like one of the waves. At once, a loud splash as something enveloped him tightly from behind. At, hang on, at once, a loud splash as... This is terribly written. In an instant, he was completely immobilised. Ah, holy shit, he screamed instinctively. After a moment of sheer panic, he realised the constriction was from a pair of warm arms and legs wrapped around his body tightly. Ha 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 ha, Will's laugh rang in his ears, at once infuriating and comforting. You're stupid, Chris said with a smile that could be heard in his voice. Will reached around from behind and took hold of the shaft, wielding it like a flashlight. Can you imagine that? He withdrew his hand from between Chris's legs and grasped him by the hips, steadying himself on the ocean floor. Wait, they're all the way down to the ocean floor now? He took a big handful of Chris's ample butt cheeks. He ran his fingers up between them, feeling the whole pucker at his touch. What is with all of these sentient anuses? All of them are puckering. <laughs> Does mine do that? He leaned down against Chris's neck and whispered into his ear. 
Do you want it? Of course I want it, Chris shot back. You know I want it. I thought you were a fox in seventh grade. Haha, <laughs> really? Will asked. I thought you were a fox too. You're still a fox, he added. I was just scared you thought I was a stupid jock. All of stupid jock is one word, by the way. You are a stupid jock. You were the university quarterback. You won the Maxwell Award. What is with all of this backstory? I don't care. Well, I am a jock, but I'm not stupid. Okay, can we move on from this conversation? Chris leaned back and kissed Will. I know, I'm just teasing you, handsome. You're actually really intelligent and impressive. Impressive, Will asked. And they're having this conversation on the ocean floor. What? Chapter three, a pearl. And the font has just suddenly changed. There's a really random chapter in Japan of like this meeting that has nothing to do with what's going on. Or they're talking about a nuclear power plant. I bet you there's going to be some kind of spillage in that massive penis shrine that fell into the water will have this kind of radioactive thing that makes it come to life. Okay, now we're back with Will and Chris. That was a really random, boring chapter. Like, I'm not liking this. <laughs> I didn't think I would, but like, come on, make me laugh. You like that cock? Will asked, trying on a persona he had seen all week on the island. No, I hate it. Chris replied sarcastically. Yes, of course I love it. Chris turned to face Will. Wait, how are they on the ocean floor, but also above the water? I don't get it. Okay, so they both ejaculated. As they embraced, catching their breath, the water calmed around them. Their lords coalesced, swirling like delicate ghostly silk in a watery waltz. <laughs> like, can you imagine that? Like, it's just swirling around. Like, this author is trying to make that seem romantic. What happened to some good old-fashioned, I don't know, fireflies? You know, something really romantic, or like snow. Oh, that would be perfect. But no, it's come. The seed was carried by the current away from the boys and the jubilant island. It floated away from the coast and out into the dark, fast darkness. So now we have travelling semen. <laughs> I can see where this is going. The radioactive water slowly made its way down to the safe floor where a giant penis statue had resided for several years. Ooh, it's been there for years. The radioactive mixture washed over it. It began to stir. It began to think, sense, and hunger. Let's go back to the fire, Chris suggested, unexpectedly feeling cold and spent in post come down. Will felt Chris shivering in the water. I think I want to keep swimming a bit. He began walking with Chris back towards the faint laughter and glow of beach fires on shore. It's been a while since I went swimming. Oh, oh God. And so it begins. It glided silently like a submarine through the black water over 400 yards away from the shore. Dude, dude, this is where it gets good. I can feel it. I can feel it in my waters. Despite lacking a conventional brain, the colossal beast had a complex system of special tissue and blood vessels, which was complemented by a system of acute receptors and sensitive nerves. Very important to know. When their semen had arrived in the creature's domain, diluted to a negligible amount, the animal's hypersensitive nervous system immediately detected the chemical compounds in the water, signaling the presence of the lovers in the water. This is very technical. Very, very technical. It's a little bit hard to understand. Scientifically, it's making sense. It was now fully lit in the darkness. It turned and propelled its mammoth form, beginning a precise ascent towards the scent of its prey, its favourite prey, gay lovers. <laughs> the behemoth had gained momentum, driven by instinct and a powerful transfusion of chemicals, primarily hormones. It propelled itself briskly at a 45 degree angle toward the source of seminal fluid, why is this being really specific for a 45 degree angle toward the source of seminal fluid? A flavour it had instantly recognised in the water and was now tracking with ferocious determination. Its body had hardened and fortified in preparation for the impending strike. <laughs> he tried to maintain a chest full of air floating carefree toward the open sea. I'm guessing Will. This is a terrible writer. He occasionally paddled back towards the shore before relaxing again. He couldn't remember feeling so free and encumbered. Here at the gayest bash on earth, he was free to be himself, completely himself. Back home was a different story. Oh, bless him. He let his legs flow back down to the ocean floor. So he must be in shallow water then. He could no longer reach. He sat up. He had drifted further out than he realised. Then he's not in shallow water. What? Oh, I'm getting scared. Do you know how... Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. Oh shit, sorry! <laughs> That's two shot. I'll take a double shot. I said sorry, Margaret. The people in this library are so judgy. Mm. 
the thing advanced, almost converging with the surface of the water. The scent of its target had shifted. It no longer sensed ejaculate, but was instead tracking the alluring sense of anal canal and penile tissue. It felt a regular interval of strong vibrations from above. The pattern was intensifying. Will heard something splash about 10 yards away. Now he was panicking. What is out here with me? Why am I swimming in the ocean at night alone? The monster had plunged several yards under its victim and was poised, facing upward. The tempo of the pulses overhead had increased. Instinctively, the thing shot upward, rushing through the water. It reached the surface with some speed and collided violently with the swimmer. It breached, arching through the air, flinging its victim through a cascade of glittering salt water before crashing down under the surface like a whale. It dragged the body under, with it. His foot was lodged in the opening at the top end of its missile-shaped form. Ow. Crap, Torbo was here. How did you get here? How did you, how did you get into this library? The behemoth came to a slow halt underwater. It hovered about 20 feet under the water. He screamed under the water, releasing a cloud of bubbles and taking in salt water. He clamoured widely, out of confusion and sheer terror. With his free leg, he stomped down on whatever had his foot, dislodging himself and pushing off from wherever it was. He kicked and failed until he reached the surface, erupted with a splash and a piercing scream. Will shot up and then bobbed back down, taking in another mouthful of save water mid-scream. Uh, honestly, the opening scene of Jaws scarred me for life. If I had therapy, it's something I would talk about on day one. But this is a different kind of therapy I'm going to need. He continued to thrash until he resurfaced, coughing and splashing. The pain from the salt water in his eyes and his broken leg and ribs was dominated by adrenaline and shock. He tried to water for a short while as his thoughts began to unwind and his breath calmed slightly. The thing closed in on him. He gathered every last ounce of physical strength and resolve he possessed and opened his legs wide for one good solid effort. The creature lunged forward with one last thrust and rammed itself up his ass. With such incredible force that it tore clean through him, splitting him in two. Oh, medially from the anus like a zipper. Ow. Oh. 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 He felt only a moment of abject searing and pain as his sinewy body tissue and bones were wrecked by the demon, followed by a complete void of consciousness as he was fucked in half by a monstrous sentient sadic. <laughs> fucked in half by a monstrous sentient sadic. After tearing the body apart, it turned and rushed back into the cloud of blood, flesh and bone, thundering through the torn carcass, striking both halves and pitching them into a rotation like two shredded propellers, spiralling inanely as they drifted down into the current. Poor Will. This was not what I was expecting. The monster continued repeatedly pushing back a few feet and then driving forward into the mess, mindlessly humping and pumping with its entire mass like an aroused dog gone berserk. It was fixated on the faint scent of gay sex, still barely lingering in the water, I mean, can't blame it. It performed an endless loop of rapid thrusts over and over, creating a frothing crimson wake each time, unseen by anyone, save for the waning crescent moon suspended dimly overhead in the midnight sky. Okay, that line was kind of beautiful. Two new guys had ambled down the path from the house party, surprised to see the concentration of partyism on spot. One of them approached Chris, who was at the front of the group next to Vince. Hey, I'm Dave, and this is Rob. What's going on? We heard someone yelling. Our friend went swimming and then we heard screaming and he hasn't come back. We've been calling for him. Dave suddenly looked alarmed. Oh, is it Jeremy? Vin shook his head. No, our friend will. Rob's eyes widened. Our friend Jeremy said he was coming down for a skinny dip. That was two hours ago. Suddenly Rob tore off towards a singular nude figure carrying a pair of trunks. The guy was wet and making his way to the warm fire. Jeremy? Rob called as he approached. No, I'm will. Oh. So the person who was split in half was Jeremy. See, I was saying Will because the author was saying he, he, and I didn't want to get confused, so I just said Will. So it wasn't even Will who got split in half. It was Jer poor Jeremy. At least Will's okay. But then why was the sentient sea monster dick attracted to Jeremy if it was the scent of the gay sex <laughs> that brought him there? Will screamed Chris, who was now sprinting. Will put on his trunks just as Chris bowed in and embraced him. Oh my god, we thought you drowned. Will looked perplexed and was slowly shaking his head. Oh well, that explains why I heard so much yelling. I thought it was just partying. I had a nice swim, but the current took me way down the coast. I've just been walking back and enjoying the beach. Look, I found you a sand dollar. End. Or is it? I hope it's the bloody end. Because that was terrible. It wasn't even really funny. What a disappointment. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> you know what, I'm going to take a shot 
for just having this stupid idea. I need to vet these books and make sure they're actually funny before reading them. How I'm going to do that, I do not know. Well, that was Are You There God? I thought I heard Cody masturbating, but it was just Grandma stirring a pot of shells and cheese and cock. Both of these were not as funny as I was hoping for. So many missed opportunities with both of them, if you ask me. These could have been great literature. I do have two more books by the same author, so I could do an episode two reading them if you want to say that. But after those two, I'm like, make me laugh. Make me laugh. So I'm worried about the next two, Dickhead and the first book in Vulgania, which is apparently a Narnia retelling. And Dickhead is a Wizard of Oz slash Wicked retelling. Um, okay. If you have any ideas of how I can utilize the sound level meter in future videos, let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video anyway, despite it not being as <laughs> good as I was hoping. All I can say is you better pucker up that anus and like this video. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all your comments down below, let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you've read these books before. Yeah, I wouldn't blame you if you've never read them in your life. I pretty much read them for you. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons and my One Piece channel members for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or my One Piece channel membership, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.